It looks pretty good, huh? Very class. the third time we've applied leveling primer and it is really looking good so my idea is to keep a little bit of epoxy around the chip not just there otherwise you will create like an edge in there and the epoxy could comes out after the primer we can just level it better and make sure that it's absolutely flat and nice yeah really after all this time yeah oh you've got to cut a mask yes so okay, then, so you keep that, so you just measure that out and then cut exactly. it. Exactly. And also you are going to keep the circle like absolutely round. Next, we'll see what the primer, how bad it is after the, the black primer's on there, okay? I'm sure that it's going to be It won't fine. be too bad. Oh yes. Right. We've got the tank after the first three coats of primer. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna spray a little bit of silver, just a little bit as a sun guide. Um, so that is gonna help me to make this absolutely flat. Okay, today we're going to line the tank and there's some comments made on some of these sites a bit concerning. They say that car, uh, glass fiber tanks, you must change them out to aluminium uh, because they can't handle the ethanol. Well, that's not true. You mix up an epoxy base tank liner and you can stick it in just about anything. Obviously, put a vacuum cleaner down there if you hear any rattles. Get it all cleaned out as much as possible wash it out, whatever, but one thing's for sure, this has to be dry. Dry as a bone inside. I want to put some putty in here because I don't want the epoxy to get in here. So I use this sort of Play-Doh stuff uh, and then just line that on the inside. And the epoxy should just run off that. So yeah, the rest is self-explanatory. Mix up the epoxy, this is a five to one mix. Pour it in the tank. Uh, you've got your blocks on the same putty stuff so it doesn't seep out and then just shake the hell out of it uh, like this and uh, just make sure it gets all around to the back to the sides and then when you're pretty sure you've covered all the corners and the hump inside uh, then just flip it over and drain the excess out and you're done you think once this is lined problem solved ethanol thing of the past Really just gonna set it like that. Oh, and one other very important thing is now's the time to get rid of these. Mm. 
that's the the fuel inlet uh, all cleaned out. So that is now a fiberglass ethanol friendly tank. So don't let anybody tell you it can't be done. So here we got the side panel in silver, was in silver originally, and now it's about to put some primer on. We're going to see just how stable this surface is. Uh, this, of course, is a Harley Davidson mudguard from a very new bike, but because, of course, they don't put primer on, um, this is what happens to a bike. It's a few years, not 10 years old. That's really bad. Roughly five millimeter sponge, top cover sponge. What uh, I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and save as much of this as I can because this is the template that we use to make the next uh, seat. So one of the problems we have with this is how incredibly brittle it is. Now I want to try and unpick all of this and then lay it out on the new material and um, then we can cut it out. So the way to soften this material quite simply is using heat. Heat will open it up and it will stiffen up again, but at least we'll, it'll open it up so that we can actually get to the stitches and we can take panel by panel off. So there we have it. Perfect template. You can see after the primer that I put on uh, that we've got a few little bumps and dings in there. Um, I'm suspecting these are from from this little latch here so I'm going to just tap it out and then we'll reprimer. I've got to fill this we use a, um, a primer here with a it's a thick um, pitting filler auto leveling filler primer which is great because it means I don't have to put any bondo on this let's get going touch-ups, small little details. This I've cleaned up, grown up, but I just want to put any fitting that's there. And then we'll put our filling primer on.
this is what they call the Widowmaker frame because um, later on they put this uh, modification in underneath to stop any front fork collapse, which was uh, apparently a, an issue. This is the weld that was applied in 1967-68 to this frame. Now, you tell me if that A looks repaired or whether it looks like it's cracked. Now, I don't want to tempt fate or anything, but to me that looks very healthy. I got that's now ready to put a primer on and see once we put the primer on then we can see how much work there is still to do because um, it's very difficult to tell when you're at uh, base metal and if this is a new frame base metal would mean it was absolutely at its best but in a case of a restoration it's not the case because you've got all sorts of little um, pinholes and pit holes and stuff like that that you've developed over time obviously so um, Hopefully I've got all, got all of those and we're good to go. Cutting the ice elastic ring out, the old one. Pretty crude way of getting it out. Come on. I'm just really relieved it's out now. put on a primer coat on here and obviously the primer being black really shows up all these issues here in this particular instance you can see the chain damage you can see in another video that I did on Royal Enfield, uh, I showed you how to put the fin on. What we do here is uh, I've obviously cut out a 5mm or 4mm plate, which is measured from the base, the thickest part of the fin, because obviously it tapers down. So, what we're going to do is very simple we heat up the casting with a torch nice and gently don't heat up the mild steel part that's the bit you don't want to heat up and then with the right voltage set on the uh, MIG or an arc welder you want to quickly dab a bit of bird poop on there and then let it let it cool for a few minutes heat the casting again and then so you just bird poop your way down cooling heating seems seems a bit fiddly to do that why I do it is because casting these castings don't expand and contract as quickly as mild steel does so can you imagine the two fighting with each other and it would therefore crack so what you have to do is you can't use mild steel unless you have to use a stainless steel uh, welds mild steel and casting together and that's just reminded me because I've still got mild steel in there and I've got to change it this is uh, the stainless steel there which I just feed into the system and then we'll start to weld this up so that's the weld you've really just got to spot it spot 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 I'm no pro at welding but this is good this is gonna be fine there we go all done So Marek, another one. Oh, <laughs> different, different, yeah. Different, different kettle of fish, eh? But nice. Some people reckon this was the best motorcycle ever made. And I picked this motorcycle up for, for 750 pounds. It's, it's quite incredible what you can get. 
Yes! <laughs>